Here is Minimap's game preview of Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes. We have played the preview build of the game for about 5 hours before coming up with this video. Before we actually dive into the game preview, I would like to go over a little basic information of this game. The game will be launched on April 23rd, 2024. It is developed by Rabbit and Bear Studios, which consists of the two main figures, Yoshitaka Murayami, the writer slash director of Suikoden 1 and Suikoden 2, and Juno Kawano, the game designer slash producer behind Suikoden 1 and Suikoden 4. Since the first series of Suikoden was released in 1995, the Yuden Chronicle has brought the two together after 25 years. The Kickstarter campaign for the game was opened on July 27, 2020, and reached its minimum goal of 509,713 US dollars in about two hours. The game claimed the top spot in the 2020 Kickstarter funding, and a spin-off of Euden Chronicle Rising was released in May of 2022. Unfortunately, there's a very sad news. One of the main director, Yoshitaka Murayama, has passed away in February due to an ongoing illness. I hope he rests in peace and gets to enjoy the game's successful launch up there. First impression. First things first, this is a retro game. I had high expectation as I also enjoyed playing Suikoden and the game claims to be the spiritual successor of Suikoden. However, for some, it might feel quite old fashioned. Some modern game features like auto save and quest tracking are added, so it is not entirely a retro game, but it still holds most of the retro game style features. The first thing you see when you start playing is the graphic. The combination of 3D background graphic with 2D pixel art character seems a bit odd at first glance. I was puzzled in why they would choose this way to demonstrate the story. However, after playing up for about 30 minutes, I kind of understood what message or intention they had in blending the graphic this way. They wanted to bring back the nostalgic JRPG concept of the past into the today's standard. After playing it for about an hour, I realized that my eyes were fully adapted to the harmony of the classic JRPG style graphic with the typical modern 3D graphic and actually loved it. Also, the camera depth of focus made the game graphic more appealing. The camera focuses on the character and the background around the character and out focuses the rest. This method is similar to the ones used in games like Octopath Traveler or Triangle Strategy. But this particular way made the game much more appealing with the 2D pixel art characters well blended with the 3D background style graphic. It almost brought me back in time when I used to play JRPG all day when I was much younger. Plot. You play as Noah, a boy from a small village who ends up going to the big city to join the Watch. Then, you are joined by other Watch members and set off to find the hidden rune barrel. The six of you dive into the deep dungeon, fight through all the obstacles ahead of you and finally find a prime rune. Then the rune is taken by an evil boss and your mission is to retrieve the rune and bring peace to the world. It is a typical JRPG style story but I loved how the game was an entirely open world where you can basically take time to explore around the map freely. The map was kind of like the ones in Diablo series where there is a mini map on the top right that guides you so that you don't get lost or spend hours trying to find the right path that leads you to the next story or quest. You can also see the entire map. 100 heroes. So the first question that I had and probably many of you had is are there really 100 characters? The simple answer to this is yes, but there are actually more than 100 characters. According to some sources, the game will feature 110 characters that you can recruit to join your ranks. For us, we could only meet 10 heroes while playing the preview build version. It is quite difficult to imagine how much time and effort the team would have had to implement in creating that many characters. Though each and every character does not have different complex stories, each character had an individually distinct trait. For example, there's a character named Francesca who is a healer. Though she always smiles to others, she has a surprisingly violent side hidden inside of her. Come to think of it, if each and every character had a complex background story, then it would be quite difficult to remember all the characters. And of course, the main characters have complex and interesting background stories, so don't be too disappointed. The battle system. So let's talk about the battle system. 
You will be fighting battles as a group of six in a turn-based tactic way where you enter a command for each character before they actually attack the enemy. While the game follows the classic field encounter system, the game supports automatic battle options, which makes it less tiring for players. So for regular battles, players can sit back and enjoy the automatic battle system. However, for boss battles, you will have to manually execute them and there are some special actions you may encounter. So, you will need to come up with a strategy using the surrounding gimmicks like a crane or a lever to defeat the boss. One thing that was also very helpful was the affordability of the items. The in-game currency is called Bakwa, and you can easily get them throughout the game. I remember in some games, equipments are ridiculously expensive, so you would have to choose between getting an upgrade armor versus 10 herbs to heal you during the battles. However, this game was quite the opposite. During the preview build gameplay, my last balance was around 12,000 bakwa, and the most expensive armor at the time cost 900 bakwa. So, you don't have to be grinding for countless hours to get one sword or an armor for this game. Music. We cannot stop emphasizing the importance of music in JRPG games. Suikoden series is also known for the excellent soundtracks and I'm pretty sure the devs of Eurin Chronicle were aware that soundtrack is going to matter for many players. You typically have to move around town or explore the field a lot and encounter repetitive battles. Without the soundtrack, this task would feel much more dull. Fortunately, the soundtrack for this game was beyond great the soundtrack that played while strolling around the village or engaging in a battle against enemies were greatly harmonized with the screen and I couldn't ask for more. Veterans like Motoi Sakuraba and Michiko Naruke participated in the soundtrack project. Sakuraba is known for games like Tales, Star Ocean, and Dark Souls, and Naruke contributed to series like Wild Arms and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. So the final thought, is a Yurin Chronicle for you? There are several factors you should consider before pressing the purchase button because your $50 should be spent wisely. If you are a fan of Suikoden series, then there is no doubt that you will love this game. This is the spiritual successor of the Suikoden series, and the main directors are the ones who actually participated in the Suikoden project. The Suikoden series has been dead in the water since the PS2 era, and this game is the game that answers to your question, what if the series never stopped and continued in the PS2 until today? Also, if you enjoy JRPG games and have played several other JRPG games, then it will not take long until you start adjusting to the 2D graphic and like playing the game. You should not expect this game to be like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that just came out recently because it is not. But if you are familiar with the JRPG style games and enjoyed most of them, then this game is also for you. You're also probably aware that some JRPG games like to stick to the good old 2D graphic because new and improved is not always the answer. For those of you who have never played JRPG but are curious of the genre, then it is definitely worth a try because you can experience the classic JRPG elements blended with the modern day elements. Though the graphic may seem a bit crude and old at first, you will get hooked on this beautifully assembled JRPG in no time. Personally, I think this sums up this game. It is a game that reflects the game elements of the JRPG in its golden age, but made in 2024. If you would like to know more about Eurin Chronicle 100 Heroes, visit Minimap's game page and get the latest news on the game before its official launch by hitting that game notification button on the game page. You can enjoy more exclusive game content like this one at your gaming hub Minimap.